in my childhood. They were constant companions of my imagination, the subjects of my immigrant parents' bedtime stories, and even the names of children I played with when we visited our cousins in Greece. I was fascinated by the gods' duality, immortality and power contrasted with frailty and vice. The god Apollo, for example, was both a healer and the bringer of disease. During the Trojan War, with his silver bow and quiver of arrows, he rained a plague down on the Greeks to punish them for kidnapping and enslaving Chryseis, the daughter of one of his favored priests. I found myself thinking again about Apollo and his vengeance as I contemplated our own 21st century barrage more than 3,000 years after the events described in the Iliad. It seemed to me that the novel coronavirus was a threat that was both wholly new and deeply ancient. This catastrophe called on us to confront our adversary in a modern way while also relying on wisdom from the past. Despite the advances we have made in medicine, sanitation, communication, technology, and science, this pandemic is nearly as ruinous as any in the past century. Lonely deaths, families unable to say goodbye to loved ones, or perform proper funerals and acts of mourning, destroyed livelihoods and stunted educations, bread lines, denial, fear and sadness and pain. As I write on August 1, 2020, over 155,000 Americans and over 680,000 people worldwide have died, and many more are still uncounted. A second wave of the pandemic is imminent, whether or not the hopes for a rapid vaccine are realized. However, even in the midst of the onslaught, many people believe that the efforts to contain the virus have been excessive. Some Americans feel that our response has been overblown, yet another reflection of this nation's modern inability to accept hard realities. But I believe that this thinking is wrong on two counts. First, it has required extraordinary force including all our 21st century wealth and know-how, to contain the virus to only this many deaths. I share the view of many good scientists that vastly more Americans would have died, perhaps a million, had we failed to deploy the resources we marshaled, belatedly, in the spring of 2020, to cope with the first wave of the pandemic. To compare this COVID-19 pandemic without mitigation efforts, or even with mitigation efforts, to a typical flu season, as some have done, is a misreading of reality. Second, it is a misreading of history to think that in our time, we would somehow be spared the burden of having to deal with a pandemic, or that other people in other times have not faced the same fear and loneliness, the same polarization, the same fights over masks and business closures, the same call to neighborliness and cooperation. They have. In late January 2020, as the virus was gathering force, I shifted the work of the many talented young scientists and staff in my research group at Yale to focus on it. First, working with Chinese colleagues, we published a study that used the mobile phone data of millions of people in China to track the spread of the virus in January and February 2020. Then my lab began to plan studies of the biology and impact of the virus in the isolated region of Copan, Honduras, where we had a long-term field site and close relationships with 30,000 residents in 176 villages. We also started exploring how mass gatherings, like elections and protests, might intersect with the spread of the virus throughout the United States. And in May 2020, we developed and released Hunala, an app based on network science and machine learning techniques that people could use to assess their risk of infection. The atmosphere in the whole scientific community in early 2020 was charged with urgency and probity. Colleagues all around the world pivoted to work on the coronavirus and broke down barriers to research, collaboration, and publishing. But very quickly it also became clear that there was an emerging vacuum of public information and few effective ways to communicate the problem that was unfolding. Along with a broad range of scientists, including epidemiologists, virologists, physicians, 
So 